Thanks for joining us on Politics on Sunday. We are reaching you live from TVC News Studio in Abuja, the federal capital city. I am Femi Akonde. You can join this conversation online by subscribing to TVC News YouTube channel to watch the live stream. Also, follow me on X, or formerly Twitter. My handle is at Femi Akonde TVC. We will start by giving you fresh updates on some of the developing stories in the country. But let me first tell you that President Bola Tinubu has joined Nigerians in mourning what he described as the unprovoked killing of brave military personnel during a rescue mission to Okwama community, Ogeli's south local government area of Delta State. In that unfortunate incident, a commanding officer, two majors, one captain, and 12 soldiers sadly lost their lives. One civilian was also killed. Now the president in a statement expressed his grief over the needless death of the gallant soldiers. The president is also clear in his directives saying the defense headquarters and the chief of defense staff have been granted full authority to bring to justice anybody found to have been responsible for the crime against the Nigerian people. He promised that his administration will not relent until it achieves peace and tranquility in every part of the country. While still on the Delta incident as we speak, there is rising tension in Okwama, Ugeli South local government area and Okolaba in Bomadi local government area of Delta State as the army has taken over the area following the killing of 16 soldiers, including senior officers. Some houses, as you can see in um, this video, some houses in the abandoned communities have been set ablaze in what is believed to be part of reprisals by the Nigerian army, targeting armed groups suspected to have carried out the attack. This will certainly not be the best time for innocent residents of these communities, as the army intensifies its raid of the area to avenge the gruesome killing of its personnel. It was reported that 15 bodies of the soldiers were recovered by the Joint Task Force in the state. Some of the bodies recovered had their heads severed off, while others were ripped open, with some of their vital organs missing. This kind of attacks could be an indication of a resurgence of trouble in the restive Niger Delta region and could also cause a setback to Nigeria's crude oil production. Well, still on insecurity, but this time in northern Nigeria, where President Bola Tinubu has ruled out payment of ransom or negotiating with terrorists for the release of more than 250 pupils abducted in Kuriga, Chikun local government area of Kaduna State. The president has also directed the armed forces to leave no stone unturned in its efforts to ensure the safe and unconditional release of victims of abduction across the country. But Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmed Gumi, who is believed to have close ties and access to the armed bandits in the vast forests of northern Nigeria, wants the federal government to reconsider its hardline position. He has even offered to mediate between the federal government and bandits who have placed a ransom for the release of more than 250 school children. The Northern Elders Forum also wants President Bola Tinubu to negotiate with bandits. They say negotiating does not mean condoning their actions or granting them amnesty. The spokesman of the Northern Elders Forum says it is important to consider the potential benefits of engaging in dialogue because, he says, in conflict resolution, dialogue is crucial to finding peaceful solutions. While well, moving on now, President Bola Tinubu has continued to insist that Nigeria will be better without the payment of petrol subsidy. The president spoke when he met the Forum of State Chairmen of the All Progressives Congress. He told them that his administration is deploying resources to critical sectors and areas with significant impact on the welfare of Nigerians. He also emphasized that the country's treasury is sacrosanct and must not be abused. He urged party members not to wait for appointments before bringing good governance and exemplary civic engagement to the doors of Nigerians. Joining me live in the studio is a man 
who was in that meeting with President Bola Tinubu at the State House on Friday. He is the Secretary of the Forum of State Chairman of the All Progressives Congress. He's also the State Party Chairman of the APC in Cross River State. Alphonsus Oga Eba, welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Yes, well, when uh, President Tinubu told your forum that uh, the old subsidy beneficiaries may resist um, these current reforms we are seeing as a result of the removal of fuel subsidy. He says that Nigeria will overcome. Now, could that be trying to tell uh, Nigerians uh, some of the challenges of these reforms? And is it enough for, as an excuse for the current hardship being faced in the country? Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Good evening, Nigerians. Um, let me join the President and Commander-in-Chief in mourning the gruesome mother mm of our senior military personnel yeah. who are in the front line of duty to Delta bring State. peace in the troubled areas of a Delta State. Mm. In answer to your question, it is not an issue of an excuse. It is what you and I know. It is the reality on ground. That when you fight corruption, corruption tries to fight back. Mm. I must thank Mr. President because that meeting was uh, so much revealing. It is very obvious to all of us that there would have been no economy in Nigeria today because revenue became a big problem. In the last eight years, as you would have known from the reports that is coming from the National Assembly and from every quarter now, this country was using what is called ways and means to print money just to keep an economy I can describe as a phantasmagoria. Yeah. Because the truth is, whatever you heard that the dollar was stable, that the Naira was stable at whatever level, was just but mere delusion. And that is because we're printing money. The very similitude of what used to happen in Zimbabwe in those days, under the era of Idi Amin of Uganda, Similar practices happened, and that is what took the economy down. So what Mr. President has come to clearly tell us is that without the removal of this subsidy yeah. today, which at least has saved this country, the burden of paying for those fictitious claims, which were most times being falsified by these marketers, Nigeria would have been at a worse situation. And that is what I describe as phantasmagoria. Yeah, you talked about um, printing of money, ways and means. All of that was done in the previous um, administration of President Muhammad Buhari's administration. But some people have said there's this thing with um, the APC of always uh, making excuses and pointing fingers and blaming. Even just um, recently, a tweet was put out by uh, the former president's special advisor on um, new media, that's um, Bashir Ahmed. Uh, wondering why the APC always blames the previous administration for um, the current um, wars. He uh, was referring to the current administration of President, Mo Mo uh, President Bola Tinubu. But of course, we know that uh, President Muhammad Buhari, former president, also blamed the 16 years of the APC for why um, Nigeria uh, could not um, of have... the PDP. Yes, uh, for 16 years of the PDP, for why Nigeria could not have that um, huge um, leap towards um, economic development and prosperity. Now that blame game has continued. Is, is it a thing with the APC? You call it a blame game, I don't call it a blame game. I call it a revelation of what happened in the past. And it is obvious, even to the deaf and to the blind, that the ways and means that was impacted on the, by the previous administration is what is exactly responsible for the economic woes we are going through today. But is it possible to uh, move on and fix all of that without, that is uh, what without, the really, without really pointing fingers? No, that is what the president is doing. But without stating that people will become too impatient, the reforms of this government is very clear. Mr. President came very, very prepared, and on the first day, he said subsidy must go. But don't forget, while the previous administration was leaving office, the subsidy regime was meant to expire on the anniversary of the inauguration of Mr. President. That was in June of that year. I mean, May 29th of that year. That was how far the subsidy was meant to carry us. But Mr. President came on board as a very sincere, courageous, and purposeful leader and stated very clearly that subsidy must go. But there was something that people did not understand when it's a floating of the Naira. There was also subsidy of the dollar regime. 
People were doing round tripping, buying dollars at 400 and something naira, selling at about 700 and something. And so when all these things were taken away and to be determined by market forces, dollar now, so are to the level where it now settled at about 1,800 and something, but today is back to about 1,580 something in the exchange rate. Goldman Sachs, a renowned economic group, has recently said that it might, before the end of year, get about 1,200. As a realistic optimist that I am, I believe that if we get everything right under the president, with the effort he's doing, I am sure dollar will go a little below 1,000. And that is the new economy that the president has recreated. But you know we are dealing with people that are very impatient. Everybody's in a hurry because Mr. President promised us renewed hope. And so people think that this thing is supposed to be magic or automatic. But it becomes very imperative for Nigerians to be told that this is why we are where we are. Please just give us some little time. And Nigerians Don't forget, we have a mandate for four years. By the grace of God, if we do well, that mandate again will go to about eight years. And Nigerians have also been patient for uh, about nine months now, going to ten. And, you know, um, the party made um, a lot of promises when uh, campaigning, uh, when President Bola Tinubu was campaigning. But within these um, nine months or ten months period, no matter uh, how you want to put it now, is there any... Uh, of these promises made by your party and indeed the president that Nigerians can really point to, touch and feel. For everything the president spoke about, to revitalize this economy, and that is the starting point. Without an economy, there can be no nation. Without a bold and courageous step taken by Mr. President, the removal of the fuel subsidy, the floating of the Naira, remains the greatest plank on which Every other thing shall be added on to. All of these have brought, but on the line, brought untold hardship. Hardship will come. My dear brother, the making of an omelette begins with the breaking of the eggshell. To the eye of the person saying it, oh, you have done nothing. To a man who takes his cloth to the tailor to be made a dress that you and I are wearing. When it is being designed, the first impression is that they are destroying your shirts. They are destroying your material. There is nothing that is not going to start with hardship. It's not but the, the first good time. news, it's not the, the first good time news, will return to no, the no, no. The board. good news is that there will be light at the end of the tunnel, and that is the hope we should have. And I must tell you, our meeting with Mr. President did not just renew our hope; it was a reassurance of our hope, and we left there with an insured hope. Mm. And I can tell you, there was something Mr. President said, which I took home. He said, "Whatever good that is needed to be done." to move Nigeria forward, he was going to do it. Mm. That he has pledged his life, he has pledged his time, he has pledged his effort to make sure that he takes Nigeria to the port of splendor, which he promised us. Okay, and speaking of that meeting, you know, you are one of those that also um, believe that the president should not uh, maybe be solely held responsible, accountable for some of the things happening in the country because you said that the president should also begin to hold people to account, people saddled with... Um, positions of responsibility, people put in authority, like the service chiefs. Are you saying that um, the administration has not done so well in holding a lot of people to account? Because we have people running institutions, we have service chiefs where we can see the insecurity, and, you know, all of that, are we trying to say that, you know, it's not holding their feet to the fire? I, I think if you listen to our press briefing there and um, the summary of the uh, humble advice we give to Mr. President is that our own party has been put in very bad light. And it's not something you can just say, uh, let us overlook, because we are all living witnesses. And I use this opportunity to sympathize with the parents of the family of the 200, over 250 pupils in Kaduna, in Kuriga, in Chikun local government of Kaduna. I am a parent, I'm a father, and I know what it means if I don't see my child a day. And to hear that over 250 pupils have been abducted is a painful thing. I know the pains of all Nigerians. Mm. But what we are saying and what we said on that day mm. is that, yes, Mr. President is the Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But nobody should expect Mr. President to take AK-47 and get into the forest or get into these troubled areas to fight these bandits. Mr. President, the constitution of this country has put security agencies. Yes, you can say the hierarchy starts from service chiefs. 
It doesn't end there. End there. At the national level, down to the state level, to the divisional level, you have the DPOs, to the units of every police station. We are saying that people that have been saddled with this responsibility should wake up and when they fail, when they fail in living up to expectation, they should be held accountable. And those that cannot perform, Mr. President should wield the big stick. You said that um, these are activities of criminals that are determined, uh, or these activities are perpetrated by criminals who want to put this administration and the government in bad light. Are you then saying um, the opposition is responsible for this? I don't or are, want you, to, are you saying that uh, it's, it's politics? I don't want to blame anything on the opposition because I don't know the number of criminals that have been arrested and the color of the political alliances or uh, position they align with. Mm. However, every criminal must be treated as a criminal. That is our position. And we came very united. And let me speak as Alfonso Sogaeba. Ten years ago, in 2014 precisely, the abduction and kidnap of the Chibok girls took an international dimension that brought the Jonathan's administration to its knees. With this happening again, it was said that if fire can consume the tortoise with the iron coat, what will it not do to the fowl that wears a feathered gown? PDP was entrenched in this country for almost 16 years. And if that scandal could come and take PDP out, they become an early warning for some of us who are very determined because APC appears to be our bus stop. We are doing everything because we came from PDP to this APC. We promise change. We want to see that Nigeria truly move from its point where it is to the best. As it stands today with all of the things happening in the country, if there is an election today, some people have said that the APC will lose. Uh, I am not a clairvoyant, and those are saying that do not, also, the do not also have the power now. to say that. Because for a man who has been brought by God, it is only God that can take him out. But from what I see about the present president, he was truly brought by God. If you watch the obstacles against his emergence, and if you listen to the book recently that was written by the nation man, Sam Omashe, yeah. you would know, and if you take it down, you will know that when God is involved in your matter, there is nothing that can but stop Nigerians you. Nigerians voted. So my it is not just is, about the APC. My question Let is, me take a step a little. Does he still have the support of that number of Nigerians? He has even voted. much more than that. The president today has even much more than that. If you do an election today, he will get more than the 8 million votes he had before. That is the truth. And don't forget, the circumstances in which the president came on board, nobody believed that he could come with this sincerity and this courage to confront this monster called subsidy, that he has shown this, not only does he have local and national acceptability, he has international acceptability. And that is why Nigerians want to give him the whole full swing of not just four years, but eight years. And I promise you, God keeping us alive, we will come back here in 2031, and you have reason to share a bottle of Coke with me and say, my brother, you were the Nostradamus we never knew of. You came and told us that the president will perform, and truly the president has performed. This is the man that can take us to our El Dorado, that can take us to our port of splendor. The ship is already sailing. All we appeal to Nigerians, even in the face of this hardship, is to bear some little patience. We know it is challenging. We are all feeling the brunt, but we appeal to all Nigerians. It will get well. And the opportunity of that meeting, the president told us very clear, the consumer credit scheme, the, the, the student school loan, the conditional cash transfer, that why he is charging us as chairman of party to leave political divide and go back to our respective areas with a charge to make sure that Nigerians enroll in the national identification number is to ensure that we have a proper data so that the poorest of the poor can benefit. And as I speak with you, by Wednesday I'm returning to my state and we are setting out immediately in the entire 3,281 polling units to make sure that the PDP people, the Labour Party, the APC people, as far as you are poor, and because poverty does not have color, have race, religion, or tribe, we shall carry everybody along. And I must thank the understanding governor I have in my state, who is already running an all-inclusive government. And I know 
by the time other governors at a subnational level can complement the effort of the federal government, Nigeria will be a better place. Speaking about complementing the efforts of the federal government, you know, if you said President Tinobu charged um, you or for your forum to go back to the states, explain the policies, plans, and programs of the government, and also um, urge the people to key into it. There's also this um, general perception that, you know, the government at the subnational level has not um, done enough in supporting or complementing the efforts of the government. Now, not just uh, maybe in terms of um, uh, elected um, leaders. Now, we're talking about leaders across um, all spectrum, including um, political parties and um, the likes. Would you give leaders at the subnational level a knock for not doing enough? I, I don't know who has passed that judgment, but I don't think it's perspicacious enough. Because I take, for example, in my state, Cross River State, my governor is complimenting every effort of Mr. President. Well, when that, he well, talked that's about just Cross River, I'm no, no, Cross River, I will take Cross River. I will take other states. I will take. Okay, let me take Cross River from the south south. Let me take Niger State from the north. Let me take Lagos from the southwest. Let me take uh, Abia from the southeast. These, they are still a handful. No, no. If you want 36. me to take one by one, I'll be able to mention categorically the developmental projects they are all doing to complement the effort of Mr. President. There was hunger in the land. The federal government sent grains, sent money. State governments were able to multiply that by three, four times to complement that. Only recently, the governor of Cross River State paid WAEC fees for almost every child that registered in Cross River State. He increased salary by extra 10 to 15,000 on every salary and has recently started political appointment in the state just to make sure that hunger is being, at the pains of hunger is being attenuated. And these are cross party lines. Members of Labour Party, members of PDP, members of APC today have appointment. What Nigeria needs now is a governance that is all-inclusive in nature. And that is what the state governments are doing. Only last week, I watched the governor of Niger State launching full agro-mechanization. And like Mr. President told us in that meeting, agriculture is the way out. And I agree totally. Sitting here before you is a farmer. I'm a headsman. I keep native cow. I do rice cultivation. I do cassava. I do yam. I still practice as a lawyer. People must work very hard, and that is a charge Mr. President has given to all of us. So it is a collective duty. You can see what how, the governor of Lagos State is doing. The people are ready to farm. They are ready to go to the, the farmland. The people land. are ready They're to farm. The farmlands farm. are no longer safe. No, 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 no. There is a new agenda in that direction. I must commend the Minister of Agriculture of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Senator Kiari. Recently, in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria, fertilizers, uh, chemicals, seedlings are being released to support farmers. Various state governments, like today in Cross River State, we just concluded the soil mapping but they, exercise. They still need to be, and to they are doing soil clearings. Farms. They will be kept safe, and that is where the issue of insecurity comes in. We told Mr. President in that meeting that whatever effort you are doing about food security, it will amount to nothing if there is no security. And that brings me to the question of commending the new initiative of the federal government on the issue of community policing. People call it state police. But I want to go down to the grassroots. It should be a community policing engagement. It might not wear the nomenclature of what the Nigerian police force does, but it should have an engagement where people at the local level, where everybody knows one-on-one -on -one to be involved. And when strangers come into the community, you'll be able to identify. Few years ago, I went with my bare hands, and it is a matter of fact in Cross River State in Yala local government where I come from, to chase kidnappers, I came to kidnap people from my own area. We rescued a young man from my community because we were courageous, we were determined, and the entire cyclist union and the youths followed us in the chase of that. That is what we call proper community policing. Because when you see a stranger comes into town, you know that this is a stranger. And this is not politics. And so I love your topic when you talk about politics, interest, and governance. Because this act and science of governance should be the interest of all Nigerians, all right. irrespective well, of political Well, we don't have um, too much time now. Lastly, your party, uh, there's an important election coming, which your party also um, has interest in uh, those states. And there's also an election coming up in on those states. But it appears all is not well within your party. There's still that um, internal strife and um, wranglings that a lot of people are now saying might affect your party's chance on the ballot, especially looking at the case in Edo State. 
How is all this um, being resolved? Because it is a big problem on your hands. At the risk of repeating myself again, I describe that as a storm in a teacup. And I can give you the good news. It's 90% being resolved. We had a Congress. We had primaries that was declared by our party as inconclusive. But before being declared so, uh, Honorable Dennis Idahosa was declared winner. I was in a state myself. And I speak as a man that has the fear of God. I speak as a man who truly, truly believed that that exercise was truly inconclusive. And so I rejoiced when because, the NWC... Because INEC did not monitor that no, one. No, it's not issue of INEC. It's not issue of INEC. But did INEC monitor But I don't that, want to go into the INEC details. INEC monitored that one? That was yes. INEC monitored all. INEC monitored all. But the first... Primaries. I'm sure of that. I'm very sure. As I was there myself. I was in a dose the state. Two parallel the parallel elections. It was not. Elections. It was not parallel. So to, so to say, people were in the field, but there were two parallel collation centers. I was in Proti Hotel with my governor, the governor of Imo State, and every other person that was involved. At the other Louis Hotel, or what's the name of that hotel, which was meant to be collation center. And all that happened, and that's why they say it was inconclusive. Yeah. And I agree with the NWC totally. And I must commend the courage of realizing that we did not do the writing and were told to go back and do the writing. Yeah. And that is why I must come to commend the leadership right. of the president and our national chairman. And when we went back and conducted our primaries, Senator Monday of Pueblo won. And that is the truth, and all nothing right. but the truth. All right, but the good news is that I can assure you before the next. 48 or 96 hours, you will know the resolution that I've been taking that is a win-win for everybody involved. All right, then so, our resolution is as good our, as settled. Our resolution on the program right now is that we are out of time. We'll continue this conversation oh well some other time. Oh but that's God. all on the program this week. Thank you uh, very much for watching. You can see this episode again on TVC News YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. My conversation has been with the secretary of the state's APC forum chairman, um, Alfonso Oga Eba. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.